Hi everyone! Now I know I haven't been uploading much lately because I did have some surgery and it took me a while to recover. I'm actually still recovering but I felt I feel good enough to make a video. So today I'm gonna be talking about the Tatra 8x8 that I built for the for the Rolog uh, Technic Challenge. And the rules stated that I have to use the, these wheels from Zetros. So this makes it a medium scale model. And I was limited to four drive motors, in this case four L motors here. And I'm also using one more powered up L motor for steering. So four power functions L motors for driving and one powered up L motor for steering. I also uh, require by the rules to have a working V8 engine, which is here, right behind the cabin, and there is also, of course, a working steering wheel that is connected to the steering system. So, these are the basics, and now let's see how it works. Also, I forgot to charge them all, so here's the bike, there's the power bank. It happens to everyone. Anyway, 8x8 Tatra, because of it's a kind of limited scale, I'm using all the drive without differentials, so all wheels are always driven by all four motors. That's basically it. Uh, regarding the driveline, I'm really happy and proud the way I managed to make it. I am actually using the 22 bevel gears here to transfer the power from the drive axle to the swinging half axles. So the bevel gear is driving one, of the, one side and then the other side is driven by a CV joint. This is the first time I use such a solution and it is really reliable and most importantly it is very efficient because the axle that is supporting the suspension wheel does not spin with the drive which means I separated the load bearing axle from the drive axle and this makes it much more efficient. Most other Tatras I've seen People use the same axle that is driving this, uh, the model, the, ax, uh, the drive axles, the half axles, as support axles for the suspension. Which means that the drive axle has to go, not only has to spin the wheels, it also has to resist all the forces trying to pull it and push it and everything, which causes a lot of friction. And by using the free running bevel 22 gears, I separated those two things giving this model much more efficiency. Uh, as a proper Tatra, we have a swinging half axles and I also decided to give it six wheel steering. Uh, each steering, uh, basically each wheels, each axle steers by a different ratio, which is dependent on the length of the steering arms. So the axles uh, in the front axle use the shorter steering arm to get the highest steering angle Basically, the front uh, axle is the steering is as maximum the CV joints will allow, especially the inner one because this does have a proper Ackermann steering geometry. So we have around 40 degrees here on the front tire, and then the steering angle is lower on the second axle, and the lowest is on the last axle where the steering arm is the longest. Uh, the whole steering rack can move two studs in each direction, so two studs left, two studs right. So this gives me a really high steering angle, which is required because I don't have a differential. So it was a good, uh, it's a good uh, design in my opinion because it allows me to have a really tight steering radius, which is always needed when you're basically having a trial truck. So that's the steering. Suspension, proper Tatra suspension with swinging half axles. I'm using hard shock absorbers in the front because there is more weight in the front and soft shock absorbers in the back. And this gives me a really nice balance. And you can see that the suspension can actually, you know, it can flex. It's, there is enough suspension movement for most of the off-road driving. I mean, Tatras were never famous for really high suspension movement, but I think I have around two centimeters of movement in this model. So it's it's realistic. I didn't go overboard with suspension angles. Some people do it way too hard, and then it looks kind of weird. So 
I'm really happy with that. Now, I also mentioned there's a fake engine, so I can show you that. Fake V8 engine, and there's also a steering wheel. Uh, so when you steer, there is a steering wheel here. Let's see if I can show it. And it steers along with the wheels. Now, that's not all the features this model has. One very important thing is that I had to go to Romania for the competition, which means I was limited by luggage. And this is why this model is modular. So, let me show you how I can take it apart. Basically, first I pull out all the orange pins. There are two more here. Uh, this blindly, yeah, I did it. So I pull out all the orange bin, uh, pins. I can then lift the rear here. And now I can take off the bed. So this is just decoration. If I ever want to go hardcore, I can just remove this. It's uh, a lot of weight saved, let's say like that. And now orange things so I remove this two this diagonal support and these two L beams pull out two more pins and ta-da now we have a a bit of a, a bit of less than half a tatra left here so this makes uh, this mod very easy to transport and I can also show you details now here. So this is the steering axle and inside here we have a drive axle and you can see how all the wheels are connected. So it's a modular design and it's mostly based on the 3x19 frames. These are really useful, really great for such models and it also basically allows me to expand the model I can make it smaller, I can make it longer and because of the design I can also access the gears here so these are the gears that are driven by the air motors and I can change the gear ratio so I can make it faster or slower so this is basically how it works in theory and now of course I'm going to show you the footage from the competition and testing and I hope you like it. So, enjoy! Never.
I see you're back. I just reassembled the model and I wanted to show you a bit of, a, of an issue that this model had. As always with my things, nothing is perfect and during the race the worst happened basically. I was testing the model, it went great around the track, no problem. When it's time to race, I come halfway across the track and then failure. Total failure, nothing works anymore. What's going on? this mesh into the gears which is less than ideal even though there are not many exposed gears it was just enough to get it between the these two gears and the bigger issue is the increased friction caused my axles which were unlubricated to push so hard against the beams that it actually melted them so this is this is to be a beam I'm gonna of course show you close-up photos and there was so much power that the axle grinded into the pin, melting it, causing a total failure. And this is another thing that I didn't expect. I was like, 4 L motors. That's just, you know, I don't need lubrication for 4 L motors. It's not like I'm using the wheel motors. Well, I guess I do. And next time I will be, of course, better prepared. And I'm actually thinking for the next uh, upgrade of this model is basically just to replace the four L motors with two Buoys motors for the Buoys gathering. This way I get rid of the 24 tooth gear, 24 tooth gear here, so two of them, 8 tooth gear, and 16 tooth gears in the back, so that would reduce complexity. All in all, I'm really happy how this model turned out. Not only it's very functional, it's also very detailed. Oh, did I mention this is my only model that has five seats in the cabin? Not two, not three, not five, with a proper working steering wheel. Maybe I forgot, but not enough. And I'm really, really happy how it turned out. As usual, I will be sharing the LDD file. And if you like uh, the way it turned out too, uh, then please uh, remember to like, subscribe, maybe share. I would uh, appreciate it. And of course, I will do my best to upload more often now that I'm recovering. And uh, next time, I'm going to show a new one that I also built for the Royal So that's it for today. Wish you happy holidays and have a good one. Thank you for watching, bye bye!